Hi there, welcome to this learner's video on a very exciting topic of mass spectrometry and I'm thrilled to bring it to you on an all new dynamic and interactive platform of Prezi video. The scope of this video is in trying to understand whether we can determine a molecular formula of the organic compound using its mass spectrum and as it turns out the answer is yes. Let's see how. Now, before we delve into all the empirical rules that are available to determine molecular formula of an organic compound, let's just recapitulate some basics about a mass spectrum. In a mass spectrum, you often see a peak corresponding to the highest m by z value and that peak at the highest m by z value is often designated as the m plus peak or the molecular ion peak. This peak happens to be of fundamental importance to interpreting a mass spectrum because the molecular ion peak corresponds to the molecular weight of your organic compound and that happens to be your start point in determining the molecular formula of your organic compound. Now how do you get to a molecular formula from the molecular weight of the organic compound and that's where the rule of 13 is going to help you. Where do you get this magic figure 13 from? The magic figure 13 comes from the sum total of atomic masses of carbon and hydrogen put together. Carbon has an atomic mass of 12, hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1. Put together, they make up a value of 13. And this rule of 13 helps us in predicting the number of such CH units that may be present in our organic compound, which happens to be a huge leap forward in determining the molecular formula of the compound. Let's see that with the help of an example. Say for example, if the organic compound that I am interested in it registers a mass spec with a molecular ion peak at an m by z value of 30, what do I need to do to get to a predicted molecular formula for this compound? All that I need to do is divide this value of 30 by 13. When I do that, I get a divisor of 2 and I get a remainder of 4 to make up to the value of 30. So that indicates that there are two such CH units in the organic compound and in addition there are four hydrogens so that I don't violate the molecular weight of the organic compound as indicated by the molecular ion peak. That gives me a predicted formula for the compound as C2H6. Voila, that happens to be the molecular formula of ethane. Is it always that simple? The answer is no. That is because Routinely, we often see a large number of other elements that may be a part of your organic compound apart from carbon and hydrogen. Typically, they may be oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, phosphorus and so on. So when you have any other element apart from carbon and hydrogen as a part of your organic compound, you need to make suitable corrections to your molecular formula. How do you do that? If you say, for example, predict the presence of uh, oxygen in your organic compound, you can add an oxygen but uh -uh, not without removing a certain combination of elements so that your final mass value does not differ from the value of 30 or the molecular ion peak for your organic compound. So what I mean by that is if you are adding an oxygen to the organic compound based on some predictions, then you will have to remove a corresponding number of atoms which will lead to a subtraction in the mass value by 16 atomic mass units and intuitively uh, the fragment that comes to our mind that can remove a value of 16 mass units happens to be a CH4. So when you're introducing O, intuitively most uh, chemists would remove a CH4 fragment so as to get to a new predictive molecular formula. And that's how we keep optimizing the molecular formula so as to get to the correct uh, predicted formula for the organic compound. Question, is there a way to understand whether the predicted formula is correct or incorrect? Uh, the answer is partly a yes. Now, how can you do that? You can do that by finding out what is called as the number of double bond equivalents. That's right. So you have a formula to find out the number of double bond equivalents of an organic compound based on its molecular formula. And if you get a whole number, you're okay. But if you get a fraction, you need to rework your molecular formula because your double bond equivalents cannot work out to a fraction. So it helps you in understanding whether the predicted molecular formula is acceptable or not acceptable. It may still not be true, but at least you need to siphon off those which are not acceptable from the double bond equivalent point of view. The question is, is there any other better way to find out what is the molecular formula of my organic compound? 
And the answer is yes. We are going to be using uh, in this particular tutorial uh, the relative ratios of rel abundance between a C12 and the C13 which happen to be two different isotopes of carbon in some way to give us magically the molecular formula of the organic compound. Let's get started. Let's say for example this is the mass spec of decane. You see a large number of peaks corresponding to various fragments that are possible. But of particular interest happens to be those fragments which record the highest value of m by z. And as we've already discussed in, the, in this video, this value of m by z corresponds to the molecular formula of the organic compound. Now, what is interesting to notice right up front, apart from the m by z corresponding to m plus, you also have a very tiny minuscule peak corresponding to m plus 1. Now this peak appears due to the isotope of carbon which has an atomic mass unit of C13. Why is it so tiny in comparison with the molecular ion peak? And the answer to that happens to be in the relative abundance of C12 to C13. The most abundant isotope of carbon happens to have an atomic mass of 12. Whereas a tiny fraction of this carbon also exists in the C13 atomic mass unit isotope, but the relative abundance of C13 is just to the tune of about 1.1%. And we are going to make use of this knowledge of the relative abundance ratios between C12 and C13 in some way to get to the total number of carbon atoms in the molecule. And once you have the total number of carbon atoms working for you, you can always get to the predicted molecular formula. Let's look at that again with an example. Now the formula that we are going to be using to find out predicted molecular formula is the relative abundance of the M plus 1 peak divided by the relative abundance of the M plus peak. Multiply that by 100 divided by 1.1 and we've already discussed the origin of this value of 1.1. Let's see how to work that out in a real time situation. This is the expanded mass spec of decane once again, and you have the intensities given for two m by z values, which are at the highest m by z for this particular mass spec. So our peak at 142, which happens to be the taller of the lot, happens to be the m plus peak. And you have a very tiny peak corresponding to m plus one, which happens to appear at a m by z value of 143. Now the relative intensities are given by the total number of events that are registered at the detector and this relative intensity of number of events at the detector happens to be in the ratio of 330 is to 3107 for m plus 1 divided by m plus as our formula suggests. So to get to the total number of carbon atoms all that I need to do is divide 330 by 3107 and multiply this by a ratio of 100 is to 1.1. What you get is a value of about 9.6. So that gives me approximately the total number of carbon atoms in the molecule to be 10. And this happens to be a mass spec of decane. So you've got your molecular formula just by fitting the number of carbon atoms into the general formula of an alkane, which is CnH2n plus 2. And you get the mass value of 142 and the molecular formula as well from that. Now the question we are asking is whether this formula is just a off chance kind of a formula or is there some rigorous scientific backing to this formula? And the answer is that there is some scientific basis to this formula and that comes from the fact that we know carbon 13 has a relative abundance of 1.1%. Now say for example there is only one carbon atom in the molecule then the ratio of the C12 peak, which is the molecular ion peak, to that of the M plus 1 peak will be 1.1% of that of the M plus peak, right? Now, what if the number of carbon atoms in the molecule is doubled? You have two carbon atoms in the molecule. Then to that extent, even the percentage of the M plus 1 peak will go up by a factor of 1.1%. So you have for a two carbon atom system, your M plus 1 peak will be a 2.2% of that of the M plus peak and so on and so forth. As you go to three carbon atom system, you get a 3.3% of that of M plus leading to an M plus 1 peak. So that's how there is a relationship going on between the relative intensities of M plus and the M plus 1 peak to that of the number of carbon atoms in the organic compound. 
So that's another way to find out molecular formula of the organic compound. And uh, I hope that eventually you will be in a better position as you go on solving more and more problems uh, in becoming quite skilled at finding out molecular formula, which happens to be the starting point in structure elucidation when it comes to organic compounds. So, mass spec rules. <laughs>